Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Kayla. Fellas, 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 how are we doing today? I mean, we don't have an interviewee today, so different vibes. It's been a, been a while. We've been tossing those interviews at you, one one after another. So, yeah, we've been out here just absolutely grinding, uh, trying to put out some good content for you guys. Um, this week it's just going to be the three of us uh, smoking a new cigar, smoking a bottle of uh, gasoline that Caleb's uh, picked up for us. Yeah, Caleb went to be a proof for this week. We'll get into that later. Just take a sip. It's actually not bad. Take a sip, enjoy it, swoosh it around in your mouth, get a feel for it, let it I hug I think I you. could just light my breath on a fire after that sip. You should try. <laughs> you a flamethrower over there? What are those people called? <laughs> yeah, what if that shit went? <laughs> that would have been a little fucked up. That'd be cool, though. It'd be a first for Oh, the that show. would be an awesome be a first shot. Show. Like, It'd be a good clip. It would be. Knowing me, I'd miss it. <laughs> I'd miss it. I'd be like, ah, we might have to go to the manual SD cards here. <laughs> um, that being said... Uh, new cigar we're going to be smoking, a uh, brand we haven't done on the show, but uh, you have some words first? Well, before we get into that, I just would like to say this portion of our show is brought to you by our friends at Crown Heads, makers of fine cigars like the Mil Diaz brand, Juarez, and also Four Kicks and Las Calaveras. As no, always... No Lavaretta in there, huh? Yeah, I, you know, I got to switch it up. Give some different love every now and then. Uh, looking forward to their show, by the way, this year. Obviously, we got PCA coming up, but we'll talk more about that another time. Just, I can't wait. The end of the month. That, that trip can't come here soon enough. I think it's going to be a great time. We got all three of us going. I was looking forward to it, but some recent news put a little damper in my life. A little, little piss in your Cheerios, huh? Yeah. So... That being said, I'm going to get into the cigar we're smoking. We are smoking the Los Statos Deluxe Limited Edition 2024. Fancy, fancy. Gerald was nice enough to pick up a box of these. I made the trip to a little out there thing here. Look at that. Ooh. It's a nice looking box. That's a fun you know, one. For, fun one for us here. Yeah, I got some tampons in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, that is a reference to the fact that these are wrapped in like this tissue paper stuff in addition to a like Daruma style. I mean, you could pull one out and show it. Yeah, I did show it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now to get into this brand, I had to look this up because I really wasn't familiar to it and it doesn't really get a lot of like press into it. So the Los Statos Deluxe Cigar brand was revamped and re engineered. Uh, it was originally. Uh, made out of the iconic La Gloria, Factor- La Gloria Factory in Cuba. And basically what happened is back in 2022, when uh, Matt Booth came to the, his agreement with STG, he helped them revamp this, which once I heard that, all of the packaging and presentation made sense. Like Matt Booth is known for his real crazy out there packaging. We saw it with the Daruma um what's the other one uh, namakubi yeah and i feel like this is kind of his version of the offshoot even the johnny tobacco knot this year it's another one uh the limited torpedo i think had a wrap around it as well yeah so apparently like scg was smart enough to take advantage of not only did they buy the room 101 brand they bought matt booth's mind <laughs> scary mind yeah <laughs> Caleb, but, Caleb likes them. Yeah. Almost one Caleb the same. loves a guy. Almost one and the same. Great minds think alike, they say. So they're using they used his input to basically redo this brand. And it's basically a kind of a partnership and collab between what Matt Booth's got going on and Justin Andrews of, you know, Forged and STG. Uh now to get into the nuts and bolts of the cigar, I gotta pull that up because Again, not a lot of information was out on these, but they were kind of hyped up because obviously this is like a quasi Room 101 cigar, basically. You said Ventura is involved in this as well, right? Uh, 
let's see here. The I'll read you the exact press release on this here. So why don't you read the back of the box? What's it say? What was it? Uh, reimagined by the leering eye of Matt Booth and Conspiracy Studios. Okay. Ah, oh, Conspiracy Studios. I like that. Great name. Oh, all right. <laughs> so. This is a five and a half by 50 Robusto Extra, <coughs> excuse me, uses a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra binder, and dual broadleaf filler uh, from Connecticut and Pennsylvania. So I know Jerry's all gotten his ear perked up right there. And there's also Corojo 98 from Nicaragua in that filler as well. There's a lot of things in this cigar that I really like, love to smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Booth is quoted as saying this blend is very sophisticated in nature, which is probably the most clean cut thing he's ever said about a cigar. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised he didn't say it, you know, just as elegant on the suck hole or some shit like that. Uh, production was limited to 3000 boxes at 10. And yep, that's pretty much all I got on that here. Oh, so here was the collab your, who was involved. It was Matt Booth, Justin Andrews and William Ventura. So that's where that came in. But these actually just shipped March 1st. So we're essentially smoking it five days after it ended up at manufacturer's doors. Do you mean retailer doors? Sorry, retailer. I got you, dog. You know what I meant. You picked up what I was putting down. I picked it up, man. Yeah. Nice. 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 Um, Oh, Jared, though, this has got to be a little odd for you, though. Back to back torpedoes. What was the last cigar we smoked? The morphine. Oh, yeah. Dude, that was like two weeks ago. Yeah, it yeah. seems like it. Jeez. We had all these episodes banked up because they were all <laughs> yeah. interview episodes, so we just kind of took like a brief hiatus and just <laughs> chilled out for a little bit, just did the After her. Yeah, just spent. Speaking of the After her, if you guys aren't checking that out, make sure you're checking that out at patreon.com backslash Down Herf Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we put out a weekly After her show full of your favorite weird conspiracies, crazy viral clips, and of course... Antics from our boy, Mr. Steen himself. Yeah. Awesome plug right there, Jerry. Couldn't and have said it better myself. Thank you very much. I think this is one of the things we're going to start doing with the Patreon for you guys. So, obviously, with us going to PCA in the next, you know, at the end of the month, we're going to have some content scheduled from that, like some smaller things. And for those people who are members of the Patreon and you want to see these exclusive content, and that's where you're going to find it. And we're talking shorter interviews. Like, we've had some people reach out and trying to get stuff settled at the show. And I think that's going to be the benefit for it because it's a lot of work that goes into this. And, you know, we appreciate it. But, guys, we need some help paying these bills. (laughs) That's a whole fact, man. That's a whole fact. Don't miss out on any of my wild and crazy antics in Vegas. You're going to want to join that after her. It's only $6 a month. It's not much. Yeah, Caleb's going to put down $10 for a $10 million parlay and see if it hits. I think that's a great idea. We should definitely get some uh, Caleb gambling clips. Yeah, uh, we should get some gambling clips. Maybe uh, we'll, on the roulette board, we'll uh, do cum. We'll do a cum bat or, like, tit. We'll spell it out. Do it. Nice and mature. I love it. That you. What, you, what do you expect from me? The most mature guy here. Mm. I can't wait for you to meet Leo from Nova. <laughs> when I saw her um, in Florida, uh, she was ecstatic to see me and my wife and she cannot wait when i told her that caleb was coming she cannot wait i look forward to this interaction i think it's going to be something to behold uh should i wear my i love milf shirt or should i get another one big dick is back in town i don't know i think we're going to be doing some shirts some pca shirts (laughs) yeah there's a few things in plan here. We were, I mean, we're supposed to design these fucking things, right? Are we fucking, are we, are we going to do it? I think, I'm just throwing it out there. After this, we, we have things to discuss. We have a lot to go over because I think this is, this is the second last episode before the end of the month, which is going to be the show. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're going to be doing a uh, pre-show and then a uh, post-show episode. Yeah. Of course. And then obviously be posting many interviews that we do during the show. Yeah. A lot of fucking content coming for you guys. And, and for you cigar people, that's... This is the Super Bowl for cigars. Yeah. Yeah, like, great, it is. Great month. The, now, the month of March. Great guys, month. again, 
Not that we have to, you know, really tell you to tune in, but our PCA pre-show is going to be pretty fucking f- cool. There's not a lot of people that are going to be able to handle what we got planned for that as far as... Uh, we're, we're doing a pre-release to a pre-show. Yeah. <laughs> We're we're, we're gonna be we're gonna have fun with that one and uh, we'll be joined. <laughs> I even confirmed that, but oh. I'm just uh, I'm banking that uh, I, I have a very good feeling we're gonna be absolutely you know, fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge my bet on that one. Yeah, Caleb, don't you even say a fucking thing because somehow that'll be the day it doesn't work. Caleb's the ruiner too. I'm clean so. off betting. I'm saving it all, all that bad mojo from the Super Bowl all for right. Vegas. Listen. We have a uh, a lot of things that we wanted to discuss tonight. We don't really have a true topic tonight, so this is going to be kind of one of those free ball, you know, like summertime. I got a general outline. Free yeah. ball in it. Yeah. Uh, but what are we drinking with this Los Tatos? All right, guys. Uh, it looks. It's not necessarily a first for the 2024 show. 2024 limited be- edition. Because yeah, you got to make sure you say that. For because people. we did like Sorry, Caleb. we did do a little sip of this uh, on a Jeff March episode, but that was a single barrel pick. But tonight we're doing Old Line American Single Malt Whiskey. This is a cash strength right here. So this is out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, this is comprised of a 100% malted barley composition. Uh, proof on this is uh, going to be 124.6 proof as it is uh, 62.3 alcohol by volume. Uh, this bottle will cost you around 55 to 60 bucks. Uh, so it's bottled right out of the barrel. And it's just cash strength, just as it was supposed to be. Now, the interesting thing about this bottle is it's only aged for a minimum of one year in small American white oak barrels, which are smaller than the standard 53-liter barrel that is usually used for other whiskeys. Uh, because this is a, an American single malt, they're allowed to play around with the aging, so it doesn't have to be the minimum of three years. So uh, age on this, minimum one year, but on this specific bottle with the cash strength, it's about one to two years Uh it says serve better with an ice cube. Maybe cut down a little bit of the harshness. I think that's because this <laughs> is literally gasoline. Yeah. You know the dude that uh, distills this stuff? He wanted to come on the show. Uh, which guy? Mark or Arch? Uh, that's a great question. I would have to look into, okay. my, I would have to look into my thing. But uh, obviously, I think that uh, not knowing that we were going to do this bottle, that time has passed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I believe there are two... Vets that came together to make this old line product. They have like a Bravo Zulu on the back, so I'm sure that's some sort of military thing. I forgot what branch they served in, but uh, BZ, 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 yeah, yeah, BZ. Um, but yeah, it says this exclusive line right here the single malt, especially the cash strength, is not made for the faint of heart, and it's the most serious expression that old line does because they do a couple rums, they got vodka as well. <laughs> But uh, this is just one of the many plays they do on the bourbon whiskey. Um, Make it just like a scotch, using malted barley as the only grain base. Again, can age as long as they want, not the minimum three years. So uh, the smaller barrel just makes a greater contrast between the liquid, the barrel, the proofing, and all the taste that you get in there. So a little different one for us. We've only tried a sip or two once in a while, but saw it, was looking for something different. Didn't really know what cigar we were going with today, just... Throwing in a type of mix, and this is what you get. We have a plethora of backed-up cigars. Um, shit just keeps coming out. Uh, we have it all. It's all here. It's uh, it's literally all here. And there's going to be a ton more. A we, ton. we have two weeks. <laughs> two weeks till PCA. The the cigars, how are we going to keep up? We're going to have to start doing shit on the After Herf show. I'm d- I'm okay with doing a cigar review for the After Herf. I mean, they don't necessarily have to count for like uh they are gonna uh, yeah. definitely gonna count. If we're doing three, they're definitely gonna count. How how are we going True. to we we, we we have a backlog that we have to catch up on cigars? No, what like... we need to do is truthfully is we need to start getting together a little more and smoking these together, even if they're not show. Because they have to count. Yeah. There's so much we have to smoke all this shit, dude. Like, I don't even know how the fuck we're going to do it. Well, I mean, just look at today. Like, we had three cigars that, like, we could have smoked. And obviously, if we have an interview... I named seven. You had three of them. So it came down to three. (laughs) Like, and there's stuff that was acclaimed this year that we haven't even got to yet between 
I don't know, the base and the Miami 10th. Like, it's a lot that we still have to hit. Like, yeah. always looking for suggestions, too, from our listeners. Hey, uh, what was that guy's name who messaged us today? Oh, uh, I didn't look at it. That- I'll pull it up. Because this guy gets a shout out because that was awesome. Yeah, it was cool. I appreciated that uh, touching up on the story and actually taking <laughs> advantage of us uh, telling people to message us. Yeah. We always reply. I thought that shit was funny. Uh, he touched on one of our stories, and I liked it a lot. So, Oh, about uh, this guy who Mar- tried to go okay, across um, the Atlantic. Yeah. Marius Kelmillis. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. But he uh, followed up with us over the story about... Uh, the hamster wheel guy trying to get across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, well, apparently some Lithuanian rower did it over a course of 120 days in a rowboat. Just how? My guess would be he had a crew. I hope. I hope. There's no way you could store 128. Look, you're a rower, so you know that's high calorie output. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. There's no, like, the amount of food you would need on this boat. A, a ton of protein, so many carbs. You need a ton of water. Yeah, it'd be hard to do it in a rowboat just by yourself and packing whatever you could. Impossible. Unless you're a survival expert. I can't say impossible because well, it's been appara- done. Yeah, it's been done a few times by rowboat. But apparently he was like docking at ports. Like, Okay, so my uh, man was setting up these little islands. He probably hit up yeah. the Caribbean. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck his trail was. I don't even want to fucking speculate or guess. Yeah, I'm reading that article here. But like, so there have, let's see here, total... Of course, the guy is quoted. Now, mind you, he just rowboated across the Atlantic Ocean. He's like, I'm a bit tired, but I'm fine. That That's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's like Forrest Gump, like at the at the end of the run. I think I'll stop now. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Gotta go home to Jenna. So, eh? I'm gonna definitely butcher <laughs> this Lithuanian name. This guy sounds like he plays, you know, defenseman for the Red Wings. Vala Juvicius set off from Spain on December 26th last year and hoped to reach the U.S. Florida shore in 110 days to break the world record. It took a little longer than expected. He did it in 120. What a fucking loser. Yeah. Dork. Fucking loser. 20 days. You only missed it by three fucking weeks. (laughs) He's not even. 20 days? No, 10 10 days. days. Oh, I thought you said uh, he, he wanted to do it in 100 and he did it in 120. That's no, what I thought. The you record said. was 110. Okay. And he did it at 120. He missed it by 10 days. You fucking loser. So he no, I'm was just kidding. Only that the... guy is the, probably the greatest <laughs> athlete th- that I would ever see with my two eyes. And he's only the third person to ever do it. The first Lithuanian, which, I mean. Yeah, apparently uh, his finish was postponed several times due to the planned port of Eli- arrival couldn't be reached. Due to a strong ocean current that carried the boat further north. Yo, at least he didn't get swept up by any fucking crazy storms. Dude, that's That's why I think there was a crew. There has to be some sort of plan that goes into this. Yeah, the dude just probably following fucking carnival cruise ships and just docking wherever (laughs) they dock. Hey, man, if I get fucked up, I'm going to start screaming. Let me know. Dude, either way. Like, can you just imagine? Like, no. You just fucking in the. As far as the eyes can see, water. Yeah, both on all sides. Yeah. Like, if that doesn't make you a little eerie, I don't know what does. That has to make you feel small. Yeah. Like. Yeah, dude. For sure. <laughs> what else do we have on the agenda? Caleb, you had some bullet points you wanted to touch on. All right. Well, first off, this is our first March show. So we're going to get into some March facts because March is a very exciting month. Besides all the shit that we got planned coming up for you guys. Um, did you guys know... That if you were born before the year 150 BC, that March would actually be the start of the Roman calendar. So it'd be the first month out of 10 months long out of the Roman calendar. So you'd be starting the year off in March, not January. So this is pre before 150 BC. So they did their their months a little differently. So there was just 10 instead of 12? Exactly. And March happened to be the and first the, one. And then March, they were probably like 15, 20 days longer each. Or shorter. This is yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I how think they, they did like a sixty day calendar or something really weird. So times were times were different back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, March. Julius Caesar was getting stabbed in the forum. 
Actually, Julius Caesar did get murdered in March as well. Ides of March. Ides of March, yes. Yep. Uh, March is named for war, and it lives up to its title. Named after uh, the go- the Latin goddess, uh, the Roman god, Martus, the god of war and mythical ancestor of the Roman people, via his wolf suckling sons, Romulus and Remus. Oh. So, that's Romulus! Yeah. So, uh, lots of bloody battles happen in March, obviously. Uh, Geo knows his history. Ides of, Mal- Ides of March, uh, 44 BC, when Julius Caesar was murdered. E2 Brutus. Uh, so, uh, E2 what else? Brute, did- get it right. What Spare a nice guy. Mind. Best friend Stab. stabs him in the back. Here's a good one. Now, March is obviously the best month for basketball. College, okay. college hoops. Controversial. Uh, the shit don't even start until like the twentieth. <laughs> it is late. Yeah. It Why is it late. so late? It's literally it's gonna go until fucking almost May this year. This I, is a weird ter- year. For I me. wish it started March first. It should. It, it, used it should to, be like it should be required. I remember literally watching like Duke win championships the day after Easter. That was in like I don't know. That was probably ten years ago. Yeah. They've dragged everything out. Just like the NHL playoffs goes to June. It's crazy. Everything's the best. Hey, the NHL has always gone until like June. Yeah, but I feel like it goes too long. It's too long for hockey. Um, so it's the best month for basketball, but it is the worth, worst month for productivity amongst workers. Uh, it's been known that uh, employers, that March Madness cost employers $4 billion of unpaid spending, of people being lazy on company time. Spending more time on betting pools, watching the game, than actually working. So it costs, like, employers $4 billion, and this is back in 2019. I would hate to have a job where you just have to sit around and they force you to just watch Netflix all day for 10 hours and not do anything. That would fucking suck. I, that would be, honestly, that would be horrible. You know what? You need to get on that March Madness game. You need to get on those betting apps, and then you'll be a lot happier, buddy. <laughs> Maybe that's what I got to do. I got to yeah. pick up some hobbies. You're going to, you're yo, no, what's going to end up happening is... I. You're going to sue because it's going to help you develop a gambling habit. Wow, dude. Yeah. What if, man? Like, if you did ha- hypothetically have a job where they told you they wanted you to sit around for 10 hours and watch Netflix and you developed a gambling addiction, I wonder if they would be liable for that. It's all mental health, my guy. Gambling serious addiction. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah. You can't strike that from the record. Yeah, we strike that from the record. We cannot even talk about stuff like that. Well, I need to talk to my therapist about that. Okay, I'm dealing with it. I'm waiting until Vegas. Well, I hope that you do well in your recovery of mental health and wellness. All right. Also, March because I am a police officer, and we can never have mental health issues. No, it's against the rules. Correct. Well, on lighter notes, March is the best month for vasectomies among men. You might be wondering why. I am. I am indeed. I, I, this is all right. I'm intrigued. <laughs> it's going to tie right back to basketball. It's because you need at least the day off to keep the uh, the swelling down. So they say most guys get their vasectomies in March so they can watch basketball all day. And this is according to a study back in 2018. Really? Yep. I feel like that would be better in February, just based on like you know, or, or late January with like NFL playoffs going on. That's what I would prefer. NHL playoffs. You get the whole weekend. NFL. Sat- NFL. NFL. Yeah. The yeah. National Football League. You get the Saturday games, and then you get to watch the Sunday Because I could tell you, you said NHL, which would uh, probably be one of the least watched sports in late January, early February. Because <laughs> who the fuck cares about hockey until football is over? Yeah, hockey. And- exactly. You're right. Yeah. So also some important dates in March here. Uh, we have, I don't we're a day late, but there's Cinco de Marcho. Which starts every March 5th, and it's a 12-day drinking regimen, and it prepares everyone for St. Patrick's Day. <gasps> so you have to get ready for St. Patrick's Day, which is always the 17th of March. So uh, Cinco de Marcho, man. You got to just prepare prepare your liver. Is it like a, like a priming? <laughs> exactly. Like practice. <laughs> You have to. You got to get handle all that green beer, all the green drinks, all the Guinness. You got to handle I gotta it. I got to say, dude, I feel like the green beer is like an issue. Uh, that green food dye, uh, that can't not be safe. Uh, every month, California, those lunatics uh, ban some new dye or try to, uh, whether it's uh, colors of Skittles. Red 40. See, you know. Yeah, man. Look at yeah. you, bro. 
Dude, Mr. Red 40. Mr. Red 40. Dude, food coloring is the worst because, like, you just don't digest it, and then you're really concerned with the color of your poop the next day. The blue. The blue is always the most surprising. You're like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yellow and blue make green. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh-uh. Like a nice tone. <laughs> no, thank you. Nope. <laughs> All right, well, today's March 6th that we happen to be recording. You guys will get this next week, but today is actually the Big Lebowski Day. So, so today is the day of the dude, and it's a day for taking it easy all day, man. I, apparently, the movie came out this day. I feel like I'm going to be living this on... Uh, I'm going to be living this on fucking Groundhog's Day world. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. I was, I didn't so take no it idea. easy every day. Just do it. Just relax, guys. Just chill. Drink your uh, mudslides and just go bowling. Have yourself a day. Um, I still think the funniest thing Jerry said, speaking of bowling, is like the day he qu- told his dad he quit bowling. He's like, I honestly think my dad would have took it better if I said I was gay. <laughs> I, I, when I told my father that I am done with bowling, I think that if I told uh, this is a true story, he was so upset about it. Uh, he just he was just like, you could have been a great bowler, Jerry. You know, you you probably have like ten. At least 10 300s by now. I mean, I was pretty good, and I quit when I was starting to get good. Like, my average was climbing quick. And I just was like, this sucks. And my whole <laughs> logic and reasoning behind this is because I don't like games of chance and luck. So, bowling is an interesting sport because you can throw the exact ball at the exact same revs in the exact place every single time. And if that ball hits the pocket, there's still physics involved. And the physics involved with bowling is there's different reactions of how the pins move every time. Sometimes that pin can go right around those corner pins and not hit it. So you could throw the perfect shot and get robbed. So there's still a little bit of luck in it, and that's why I don't like it. It all depends who waxes the lanes those days. You know, you got a little bit there's of wax. There's no wax. Yeah. It's called the oiling. The lanes. Uh, it's an oil pattern, not wax. See, Wax, that, if you threw wax out there, oh, my God, the, the ball would hook immediately. See, this it would is just why grip. I don't know this because I'm not a bowling nerd. I actually got pussy back in the day. Dog, I was I was <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to get some puss back in the day, bro. <laughs> That's why you quit bowling. I quit bowling so I could get it. And then my dad I might as well have told him I was gay. <laughs> my dad was just like, Man, you could have really been something, kid. It's like You're not I, I my feel, son. <laughs> I feel like I did all right. I have uh, no son. I just don't bowl. <laughs> And that's what it is, man. That's a true story. <laughs> I don't even know how that came up. Because <laughs> they were talking about the bowling, and I just remember oh, you telling yeah, yeah, me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great movie. Yeah, that's exactly how it came up. I, I'll be honest. I do enjoy going bowling once in a while, though. I bowled one game at your birthday, broke 100. I was happy. That's Solid that. day. Yeah, that's it. First time, last time bowling in like eight years. That's all you need. As long as you break 100, you're good. I was chill. I was, you think, so you set the bar low. Yeah. 100? Yeah. For me, I'm I haven't bowled in eight years. I'm just going to be completely honest. The most disappointing thing about your birthday bowling was the bar staff. That whole re- like redesigned, reconstructed, under new management fucking bullshit bowling alley we went to here? Yes. That fucking place sucked. That was like, honestly, I, I can say this truthfully, and this is not to be an asshole. One, they tried to rob my wife. They tried to rob her. Huh. They charged her some astronomical number. Oh, for the lanes, because we were promised more than we got. Yeah, so they charged us for all the lanes, even though we weren't given the lanes. Why are we talking about bowling? The dude. The, today, I know, I'm saying, but like, why are we getting deeper into bowling? <laughs> because it's why bullshit. are we getting into bowling? Why are we going the people deeper? People want to know why we got fucked over. <laughs> so they charged us all this fucking money about the goddamn bowling, like the, the bowling fees, the shoes. We, we, we were like, okay with it, but then like, they... We had all these lanes reserved, and then they came in, or we came in, and they were like, well, we, we didn't really expect you to have that many people. I was like, we reserved it because we had that many people. When I say we're coming, and we're coming deep, we're coming deep. How many people do we have? 30? That's why we had six fucking lanes, or five fucking lanes reserved. No, instead they gave us two, and we had fucking 12 and 13 people on each of the two lanes. It was a fucking circus. It was, I mean, one game took two and a half hours. It was yeah. fucking insane. And you then, could leave for 20 minutes, go to the bar, wait for this atrocious fucking bar staff to fucking get you a Corona and a Lime, come back, and you still had to wait three bowlers. 
It was fucking, it was a circus and it was horrible, but I got obliterated and I had a great night. So here's my favorite part about that bar staff that just shows how terrible it is. Start, we get there like 10 o'clock-ish. Yeah. No, no, we, it was to start at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So we were there early. You were there late. I got, okay, either. I remember getting there around 10 o'clock. Uh, one of our friends is at there. We're all waiting in line to get a bucket of beer because we realize, oh, man, this is taking some time to get. Well, we'll order by the bucket, right? Wait, as we're doing this, the guy's like, oh, last call for food. Kitchen's closing. It's like 10, 15. Okay, no big deal. By the time they got to us, it was like 10, 50. And our friend went to go put in their food order. They're like, oh, kitchen's closed. He's like, what? You guys just called last call. I was, I was waiting in line. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> so. you have one bartender and there's 60 people at the bar. Yeah. And on top of that, you can't. And they're it. all with us. Yeah. So my number one rule about bars is you can have a bad bar staff, but you better have girls with big tits serving the drinks. No, this was just like a cock fest. The whole thing was a cock fest. Well, I'm it just fucking saying. sucks, dude. That, that that place is a that's a terrible establishment. <laughs> um, whoever the new owners are, you should have just let it go under. Just it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail, bro. Let's just Not run, even John Taffer could save you. Let's just run it as a front to like run money through it. Clean money, in, dirty money in, clean money out. So basically, what you're saying is, uh, you want to start a small money laundering company. Yeah. And uh, technically, not like let's not like really do it. <laughs> technically, would be like technical. So like well, you, in quotes. If I were, we'll going talk about to... it off the record. We'll talk about it off the books. Like an OJ kind of thing. If I did it, yeah, well, off the books. Also in March, St. Patrick's Day, seventeenth. Got to got to wear your green. Celebrate old Patty Day with the boys. You know, have some beers, Guinness, shots of Jameson. Tell them what do all around. Got that to look forward to. It's always exciting. I'm sure they'll be drinking that Blackberry Crown. <laughs> That's for sure. I see it's finally hit the market. Guys yeah. are like excited about it. They're like, finally got my hands on two bottles of the Blackberry Crown. I'm like, that is disgusting. It's actually, it's actually really good. I'll stand on it. And I hate Blackberry. Disgusting. I'll stand, I'll, stand, I'll stand on it. It's good. What do you guys think out there? Do you guys think that the blackberry brandy, the blackberry flavored whiskeys, do you think that's good stuff? Let us know oh, in the only, comments. Only the crown. Nothing else. Only the crown. Not, only the crown. No mohawk? <laughs> no, not a mohawk blackberry brandy. I, I hang out in South Buffalo. I'm not from South Buffalo, so it's not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> for me and my, for me and my pupils, it's not a thing. Uh, also, March 20th, there's the Vernal Equinox. Gives us a 50-50 split of day and night. Um, also, in March... The planet Uranus was discovered on accident. The guy who discovered it thought it was a comet, but no, a planet. So uh, so it really was the wrong hole. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, Pluto was also discovered in March as well in the early 1900s. So I feel like uh, this has been a nice March history lesson for everybody out there. <laughs> a lot of things are going on. Dude, March is a busy month. <laughs> busy, busy month. Got a fucking PCA coming up on the 22nd. Looking forward to that. Cannot wait. Oh, man. I need that. I need it. We're getting it. 19 more I days. I need it. How many cigars do you think you're going to smoke? Ooh, baby. Total. Oh. Uh, if we're going to do the betting odds, just put me at above 30. At minus one Oh, those are rookie numbers, bro. All right. Uh, above 35. I, bro, you might smoke that, uh, like, by the second day. <laughs> you don't know how this works. Like, do you want to have, um, do you actually want to like keep track? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we should for the weekend? Like actually give it our, we, our best. Are we talking like a full smoke all the way down? To no. The nub? Nah, no, like, no. Do, okay. because here's what happens. If you PCA. can't do that, right? No, you can. I'm telling you, if there's a scar, you don't want to fucking put down. You don't have to put it down. Mm-hmm. But what happens is a guy walks up. You're like, Hey man, what's, what's new? And he's like, uh, first things first, you put that other brand cigar out here, start smoking one of mine, and then we'll start going through the process. Like, Okay, so even if you put one down, it still counts as a cigar. If smoke. you fucking smoked a quarter of it, I will say that at least a little of it counted. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. I didn't know how we were doing my, the My view is if you walked to another booth with it, it counts. Even if you took a puff. Can you like save? That's crazy. Can you save? I'm talking full cigars. Can though. you save like the half smokes and just finish them later? <laughs> or is that roll the them into one giant smoke. <laughs> oh, no way. Some... Just like half tape them all the way. Put the bands around and hold them together. Make like a 
mink shift uh, Calibra. Ooh. Oh yeah, there you go. That'd be all different shapes and sizes. It'd be like Frankenstein cigar monster. Don't say that too loud, man. Pete Johnson might be listening. Figure out. A- you stole my idea. <laughs> I was the most <laughs> ugly cigar ever. I was in your head already. It's bro. the Frank Redux Redux. I was see. In that's your, how they should have done already. the Frank. Like made it a Calibra, like stitched together. And ah. cool. Stop. Stop giving away stop. our ideas yeah, when we do the Frankenstein. Mm. And it's just Caleb's face <laughs> made into the Frankenstein. <laughs> I call him Steeny. Huh? People embrace the Steen. Uh, also in March, guys, if you're a college kid or you were a college kid once, you know those that first week starts spring break, baby. Oh, brings back memories from uh, about eleven years ago. Oh my! Oh, I remember. Spring break. I remember my first spring break. Hell I, yeah! Uh, never went. Never? Nah, it wasn't really my thing. I was also poor. Oh, well, the first year, it was good. The second year, I just, like, put that shit on the credit card. But the first year, I uh, went to Panama City, Florida. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's backtrack. Have you ever heard Caleb talk about credit card usage? First of all, this guy acts like if he uses a credit card, the world will end. If he has any credit card debt, the I'm, world will end. I'm Mr. Steen for a reason. I'm just saying, you act like using a credit card is the the end of the world. Bro. I miss young Caleb. <laughs> yeah, I want to just live one weekend with uh, old young Caleb. Oh, young Caleb. Uh, like I said, first year, Panama City. Woo, that was fun. Uh, 21, out in spring break. Oh, man. What about 32nd year, Las Vegas? Yeah, I guess that counts. It's like a late spring break. It's like a bros trip. It's like a, maybe I'll. Relive You're thirty two, some... right? Yeah, thirty two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I said thirty you know. second year of life, yeah. Las Vegas trip with the boys. Yeah, yeah. maybe we'll do it a second time around. And then I remember the next year I went to Cancun for uh, spring break. It's pretty crazy too. But nothing will ever beat Panama City. Like some of the stories, I might have to save for the after. You should, guys might have to tune in for that. Should we talk about what it was like opening a bank account <laughs> for the show for the LLC? And you know what? Yeah, so- I want to talk about the things that certain people worry about. I want to talk about how Caleb thinks that somehow I, I, we we've had discussions of like opening up a like a company credit oh, card. I thought we were talking about spring break here. We'll get there. No, we were. We now. could get there in a minute. All right, but we'll, we'll clear it up. Ca- Caleb, we're at a tangent. Time Caleb now. thinks that like we're going to get like approved for this Wolf of Wall Street credit limit. I have good. Credit. And we're gonna go in. So do I. So do I. So you combine the both of us. But I'm saying, you know, you think we're going to like spend $30,000 and not be able to pay it back. Dog, we are going to get like this. First of all, we have zero relationship with this bank. Yes. Besides we walk Geo. in. Yeah. Geo. Geo is there. But we have no relationship with this bank. So what the fuck? Like, you think they're going to give us 30K and be like, all right, go have a blast, guys. Fuck no. They're going to be like <laughs> these guys. First of all, a podcast LLC, we shouldn't even give them a credit card. They ain't making no goddamn money unless you subscribe to patreon.com backslash down to her podcast. Help us get credit. <laughs> Help us build our credit. Help us build our credit limit so we can have Wolf of Wall Street parties and invite all of you to mega herfs in different places in the country. Mega herfs on the yacht, baby. Hell yeah. What was it? Uh, Hell yeah. What was the clip? If, uh, the no credit furniture guy? Mm. No problem. <laughs> Send him here. No problem. <laughs> Gotta talk. Go see the special man. Oh, the special man. <laughs> Let her have it. Let her have it. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, That's an after her clip, guys. You got to watch that. Let, her, let, 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 let him have it. Ha- let him have it. <laughs> $30,000 credit limit. Let him have it. <laughs> These guys are good. They're good for it. <laughs> but, anyways, to get back to that, Caleb thinks that we're going to get this like Wolf of Wall Street amount of debt. Like. Eighteen thousand dollars on fucking strippers? What are you thinking? No, I Jordan. Think... What are you fucking thinking? <laughs> I, I liked our version. I have no better. recollection of that. It was like you're gonna buy like a thousand dollars box of cigars. What are they gonna cure cancer? Yes, yes, the cigars will in fact cure cancer, Caleb. <laughs> like this guy, I, I, I just he, he thinks that we're gonna go out and just start buying thousand dollar boxes of cigars. Like, first of all, I buy a lot of cigars. Shit, you don't even know about. If you think for one second I'm buying a thousand dollar box on the cr- a company credit card, you are absolutely right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. 
I cannot wait to ruin your credit score. <laughs> sorry. I'll it's going to be a nice long. Actually, sorry. I, I shouldn't even say long. It's going to be a nice short journey. I'm going to ruin your credit score. You're with us now, baby. Sorry. It, they won't come after you if you stop, if you don't pay. It's a good point. It'll vanish in seven years or so. It's true. Just like fake, I'll fake my own death. You guys can just find me on the Should app. Should we do a uh, little intermission to talk about this cigar? What, do, uh, what are you guys thinking so far? We'll start and yeah, I'll start. Okay, dude, it's burning very nicely, constructed very well. <laughs> like the ash really held up. I had to really just tap that thing to get it to go down. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do no long ash like contest here, but uh, very well constructed. It definitely reminds me of the giant tobacco knot in the torpedo size, just the size, not necessarily the. I'm gonna smoke. say the the wrapper, the blend yeah. is completely different. No, just the size and the construction. Okay. And, and the shape, because it's got that, like, torpedo shape. So, <laughs> it, you know, obviously, Matt Booth's connected to it a little bit. But, I got to say, know. the cap on mine is ugly, motherfucker, man. Frankenstein looking. Really? Mine one, no problem. No, no, I'm not saying the cap. It's just, like, the, the wrapper, like, the, the seams, like, the, 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 the veins of the leaf. Frankenstein looking motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I would have said this. If you didn't say this was a Mexican San Andreas at first, I probably would have said, like, a Connecticut Broadleaf. I mean, there's broadleaf in it. Yeah. Uh, Have you gotten the point where you could taste the broadleaf yet? I mostly taste the San Andreas wrapper right now, but Man. I'm getting, I'm, I'm starting to hit maybe like that midpoint. It's pretty good though. I like it. I'm about. I like the, it for. Uh, I like it for what it is. I'm about at the midpoint too. Getting a lot of like uh, chocolate, pepper, and leather. Did we go over like MSRP on this thing? What is it like? About sixteen bucks we paid. Roughly seventeen bucks. Somewhere I think I in said there. something about that. Sixteen, in there. seventeen dollars. Not yeah. bad. Like it. Yeah. What is the what is the retail on the box? That it was like a hundred and six sixty. Hundred and sixty yeah. bucks. Yeah. But roughly. if you buy on Cigars Direct, I think you can get it for the low price of two hundred. You know what? We're bleeping that out because I don't want to give them any publicity. Oh, they're a whopping discount. Well, while we're in like a little intermission, what do you guys, what do you guys truthfully think about this bottle? Is it like easier to sip as the more you sip on it? I'm getting there. I'm on my second. I haven't already. really been drinking a lot of whiskey lately. I uh, trying to be a good boy and take control of my life. <laughs> Don't let the demons get you. Try not to let them get me. What do you what do you think? I don't think it drinks for like 124, maybe closer to like 110, but it's got these like spicy, it's spicy. It's got spice, but um, what I like about it and that I'm not getting is it doesn't have like a very long finish where like usually yeah. something this hot, I feel all the way down and I'm not really getting any like heat on the back of the tongue. I feel like on the, you know, like the tip of the tongue is probably where I get the most heat and then it cools down by the time it hits the, the back of your throat. I'm so, with you there. I'm talking about whiskey here, not dick sucking. So I'm I'm with you there. And the other thing about it, for like an American single malt, sometimes it really gives you that really scotchy taste. I don't get a lot of scotch taste, even though this has only been aged for about a year or two. It doesn't come off as that scotchiness taste. It actually tastes more like a bourbon whiskey as compared to some other single malts that we've done in the past. Gio, what say you? I mean, as far as like, both the whiskey and the cigar right now, I'm having a hard time tasting it because I'm stuffed up like a motherfucker and it's really annoying. Like, that's the hard part at the moment there. But as far as, like, the heat goes, I still think this is gasoline. I was going to pick up a rye today, but went with this, and I was like, yeah. Gio's probably had enough of my rye picks. I'm doing a lot lately. But uh, let's get back to spring break. Uh, Gio, you said spring break's out of control in Florida, my guy. Uh, I don't. I do not remember spring break being this violent back when I went on spring break eleven years ago. Uh, fights occasionally, not too crazy, not too many shootings, that's for sure. But uh, I remember more of having a good drunken time. What did you think of that new uh, Miami campaign to break up with spring break? Yeah, I see. I, that's the story I'm looking at right now. Miami's getting ready to break up with spring break. They're doing. Uh, they they like sent like a they well they made like a strange like liberal weird uh breakup video yeah that was fucking weird that was stupid um i got it hypothetically i'm the guy i'm miami's mayor i'm whoever calls the shots in miami dade in miami got it 
Here it is. Brilliant idea, guys. Ready? We're going to make a breakup video with spring break. You know what? I think yeah. Miami's doing well enough. They don't need college kids' money. So I think just Miami's well, just like a city where people go to spend and blow money. I feel like they don't need college kids' money. I love how you guys really just played on me just like pitching the idea. But I like their mayor. I like their mayor, Miami mayor. Well, he's here's my good, whole problem with this, uh, this thing. Like, everyone's complaining. Like, uh, so DeSantis sent, like, extra state police officials down there. Like, all that to, like check bags like people all that at the beach and all that there'll be curfews and shit which is weird i don't understand how that works but uh of course people had to politicize this and they said like someone is saying this is just an overreaction to large minority crowds and i'm like what or maybe people just don't want their shit fucked up by tourists yeah well yeah. i got some stats for you guys but... does anybody actually live in miami <laughs> I mean, like on the beach side yeah like yeah, does anybody right. have like a nice beach home i could tell you down in like boca raton nobody's from boca raton <laughs> they are just no all, one it's a they, hub where that's where you go are. to die yeah they're not yeah they're i not went locals. to dinner i i mean uh m- myself my wife and the baby brought the average age demographic down probably about 35 years <laughs> at everywhere we were <laughs> my daughter absolute hit absolute hit these old people love the baby <laughs> Love them. Then we get back to Buffalo, the city of good neighbors. Bring her out. I'm like, oh, she's starting to get so cute. Everybody always says something. I'm walking into this place with like younger people. Not a single comment. Fuck you guys, you losers. Yeah, you know what? Young kids compliment my baby. Young kids, they don't they don't appreciate a cute baby anymore. You know, you can't just say hi or make eyes or wave to a kid anymore. You know? Well, it's weird. Like, there's this like anti having kids movement. Like, did you hear Seth Rogen? Like what he said. He's like. Oh, uh, yeah, being a parent sounds awful. Like, he's, whatever the fuck it was. It was some quote like that, yeah. No, he's I like... Saw that. Yeah, he's like... Uh, just know, doesn't seem like it's a good time. No, he's like... Uh, he's like, me and my wife, Saturday, we just lay in bed naked and watch movies If we and smoke weed. If we had kids, we would never be able to do that. Well, yeah, that's called having responsibilities as a parent. And I'm sure I, that guy lives a decent life. Yeah. Funny he, guy, but... He's also a multi-millionaire. Day. He's actually someone who could probably properly raise a kid. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, has the means to properly raise a kid. Uh-huh. Doesn't mean they'll turn yeah. out good, because right. rich kids don't always it turn out well. It all depends what uh, what fucking like, nanny they pick. <laughs> exactly. That's right. <laughs> this kid will be know how to sleep. Hey, uh, uh, lady, uh, take care of the kid. Me and my wife are going to go lay in bed and smoke weed naked. You just take care of the kid and don't let her in our room, and we'll call it a day. I'm writing. Nice. I'm writing the sequel, Pineapple Express Two. She's uh, you know, gonna be in it, so just keep her busy. Yeah, nice. I gotta teach her how to teach her how to smoke. Gotta teach her how to light up a bong. But anyway, so Miami, 2021, they had a thousand arrests among spring breakers, and not just normal residents or tourists, just spring breakers in general. Uh, in 2022, they had two shootings, which injured five people, led to a curfew. And then uh, last year, in 2023, they had 488 arrests, impounded 105 firearms, and issued 7,200 traffic citations between February 27th and March 27th. So they just said, yeah, we are going to limit beach access, we're going to close liquor stores early, and we're going to take it easy. But other beaches, now Fort Lauderdale, the mayor is I heard Lauderdale is like so like literally i think the number one comment on the breakup video is like fort lauderdale is gonna be a shit show dude lauderdale is awesome yeah i know fort lauderdale is amazing i like fort lauderdale oh yeah so they they are going with no rules in place was just there and they and they even said even with the no rules in the past years since the 80s they've not fort lauderdale has never had any issues with crazy spring breakers so going back to the 80s lauderdale place to be uh, Daytona Beach. They're not breaking up at Spring Breakers. I heard Daytona Beach is lit. I haven't haven't done that, but I had a friend who went there for Spring Break. Said it was awesome. Saw a tit or two, I bet. Um, but that's that's here or there. Um, and then uh, Daytona Beach. And what's the other one? There's another beach. Okaloosa so County many. in the Panhandle. So there's that's so where, many. So that's where like Panama, Clearwater. So there's that's so much shit. So that's where, West like, Palm, Panama, West si- Palm, Delray, Del Boca Ray. Raton. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, 
We're just going down the fucking... I'm just going down the fucking down the coast. Uh, the east coast of Florida. So you go to the panhandle, and the sheriff said, we don't want to arrest young people. We just want them to come here, have a good time, be responsible. He said there is a zero tolerance policy, but in Panama City, things as long as I've been there, things have never been out of control too wild. What the fuck is zero tolerance? Uh, uh, that's for knows? the drinking and driving. Uh, okay. Maybe. It's 100%. What about just acting a fool when you're drunk like everybody does? I mean, this is Florida. You go to jail for stuff. I just remember in Panama. You're not in New York. That's what people don't realize. They're like, oh, yeah, we have a justice system that actually enforces shit. And like, it's true, and their department actually appreciates them. So Right. Like, you you don't... If you are from a soft-on-crime state or one of these bail reform things, that is not a thing in Florida. You will go to jail. I just, Hell, we had a dude for who smoked crack disappear for nine months. We thought he was dead. Then he just magically appeared. When he got back from Miami, he said the reason he came back was because the crack is better up here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's actually a true story. Uh, I believe it. That's a true story. There's no doubting it. Yeah, that's a true story. Uh, I just remember in Panama City, dude, you didn't have to drive anywhere. All the hotels, all the clubs, the beaches, all you could walk everywhere. Maybe take a cab if you needed to. They didn't have Ubers back then, but no need to drive. You're on spring break. Just have a good time. I also think people in like are like college kids are too dumb to research and think, oh man, Miami's not doing it. Well, where do we go next? Like they don't realize that there's a short distance from Lauderdale to Miami. Forty minute drive. Yeah. And it's only like twenty something miles. Yeah. It's just like because of the traffic and stuff on the ninety five. Yeah. Like, I-95 gets a little crazy. Dude, back in the day, I had a friend who didn't even know Panama City was in Florida. He wouldn't go on spring break with us because he didn't have his passport. and He thought we were going to legit Panama. <laughs> I think he told that story one time before, and I was like, is this kid retarded? Yes. It was probably 11 years ago. I mean, this is the thing. Like, here, Gen Z, as it is right now, is statistically, I think, the dumbest generation of education-wise, like in terms of standardized test scores. If there's anybody that doesn't deserve to own a house, it's Gen Z. So I hope the house is just... Fuck them. But... You guys just keep renting and making your TikToks. <laughs> TikTokers. Or whatever comes next. Whatever's after TikTok. Just... You, Something you gotta, is yeah. coming after there's TikTok. Always, there's always the next The next man in line? Yep. Always. Forever. Let it be us. Yeah. Let us control it. And then have people pay us. But... What do you what do you think about that though the whole debauchery of spring break and it just literally getting to a point where Miami's too wealthy of a city to be like you know what fuck this can't say I blame the locals though I'm indifferent I really don't give a yeah. fuck I think Florida is fucking insane in general so I just kind of it kind of fits the mold for like once in a while everybody migrate let loose go crazy it's almost like a uh, like a more tropical Las Vegas. Would you see it that way if you live there? Like, for example, like we can be crazy here because we live here. Fuck you if you're you're not from here. I, I, the thing is, like, I hate to say because I was making fun of the city of good neighbors, but I feel like we embrace craziness here. Um, like if you want to come up here and get absolutely ripped up at a Bills game, it doesn't matter if you're wearing a Miami Dolphins jersey. We'll just tell you fuck you, and then we'll uh, shotgun a beer together, and we'll jump through a flaming table. We don't care. Embrace the tailgate. Embrace being in the city. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank one, you for the free win. Yes, but it's also... We're, we're not talking just getting fucked up and having a good time. We're talking getting fucked up, shooting people, and... Let me, let me tell you something. When you have a friend visit from out of Buffalo, don't you always try to show that Buffalo is actually pretty cool? It's almost like the opposite. Yeah. Because everybody comes here with, like, the expectation that Buffalo is such a shit fucking city. We are, like, a city of losers. It's been changed. It's been changed a lot since, like, when we were growing up than how it is now. Because I remember, like, take it back to right before we were 21. It was like, eh, you don't want to come to Buffalo or do anything fun. But I think lately, as the years have gone by, the city's turned itself around. A lot of revamping, revitalization. So I think, I think now you're correct. But back... 10, 15 years ago, eh, you were like, don't, eh, let's get out of here. I think there, there's shit to do here, and I know that, like, yeah. there's going to be people that probably listen to the show that have been here that talk shit about Buffalo, and they're like, 
Dude, there's nothing to do there. But I think you're wrong. I think you just hang out with the wrong people, and maybe the people you hang out with and the people you're visiting are the ones that are boring. Come here, see us, have a drink, have a smoke. If and, Caleb's uh, allowed out. Hey, I'm a busy guy. Busy guy. Lots of kids. All right. Uh, was there anything we wanted to touch on before we got into uh, the few segments we got to get to? Uh, what are we looking at time-wise here? Uh, probably time for segments. Time for a segment. All right, we'll skip over this other part. What's the other part? Yeah, just a little Super Tuesday election update for 2024. Looking like a repeat of Trump versus Biden. Yep. Uh, Nikki Haley dropped out of the race. I think she was just trying to hang on until the Supreme Court decided that Trump was eligible. And so she would be next in line automatically. Correct. So uh, Trump actually has uh, 1,031 delegates. He needs 1,215 to win the nomination. Clearly, he's easily going to get that. Uh, Just we're looking at a rematch. Exactly. Yeah. Which, uh, right now, all of the polls have him leading Biden. It's actually, like, scary. Yeah, but uh, listen, I... First of all, you're a scumbag talking about politics on our show. Right. Secondly to that... <laughs> this is Geo's idea, too, by the way. This is for you, Dave. Secondly, <laughs> secondly... Uh, That's the same scenario that happened in 2016, but it was Hillary Clinton. Well, don't go in too optimistic. Eh, I I think we're going to see it change. This election. Nobody cycle. cares about your political bullshit, Geo. <laughs> Keeping it with the facts, we have Nikki Haley only won one state in all the states that did Super Tuesday. Was it Vermont? Vermont. She only won Vermont. I think only got ten. I, I was maybe. watching it last night, and I'm like. What the hell is wrong with these people? Well, hold on. Vermont's an open primary, so there's no... Yeah, so Repo- Demo- Democrats could have voted for her. Yes. And then um, Joe Biden, he pretty much won every state, but the <laughs> one vote that he lost, although they don't carry any electoral college votes, he lost to some random guy, Jason Palmer, in American Samoa. So the Samoans hate Joe Biden. <laughs> so random. Yeah, so it is random, but the Samoans completely hate Joe Biden. They went with some completely unknown guy, Jason Palmer, who looks like a nerd. He's a geek, uh, worked for Microsoft, and he works for the Gates, like Bill and Melinda Gates, so nerd. All right. But, yeah, there's your uh, election update for 2024. It looks like we're going to see Biden Trump again, so we'll see what happens. But there's a little nerdy Super Tuesday for you. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, Patrol Gone Wild It is time time. for Patrol Gone Wild, guys. So uh, we have Patrol Gone Wild brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, makers of such fine cigars such as Mikadilla, Sin Compromiso, Sober Mesa, and many others. Let's go, fellas. Patrol Gone Wild. We're doing it big. All right, so I have a video for mine. Crazy story. Uh, I'll just start with the headline. We have Penn State Professor who begged cops to kill him when he was busted in bestiality case, is hit with new charges of lewd acts in the park. And uh, there's a little clip, and uh, we have a video for you guys explaining what this professor did. Do you guys remember a story we covered last year on former award-winning chemical engineering professor at Penn State University, Tamis Matsukas? But quick refresher, he got caught on video multiple times screwing his pet collie at a park. He said he went there to do that so he could blow off some steam. Steam was the name of his dog. Just kidding, <laughs> that poor dog was probably named something else. That'd be a hell of a coincidence. Anyways, the cops went to his house in June to arrest him, and he asked them to shoot him to put him out of his misery. They did not, and he's in jail. Okay, we're all caught up. Well, it looks like the police have found 55 additional videos of Matsukas really giving it to the park and himself. The acts include him jerking off onto a park bench, defecating in public trails, smearing bodily fluids on a glass table, jerking off into a lake, climbing a tree while naked, and inserting a tree branch, Tootsie Pop, and the control handle of a John Deere crawler into his butthole. Apparently, he lost his mind every time he went to the park, and now he's facing additional charges because Yo, (laughs) absolutely insane. I'm going to just throw it out there. What the fuck is going on in Penn State? Like, why is it always Penn State? Uh, What's in the fucking water there? Poor Lassie. Yeah, that was a border (laughs) collie, too. Uh, Dude, this guy was an award-winning teacher, uh, scientist. He's been teaching since 1991 at Penn State. So (laughs) He was definitely from Sandusky. 
his, he lost his mind. He said he went to this park, uh, brought his dog, and he was doing this stuff to uh, blow off steam. He must have been living a real stressful life. They found 55 videos of him doing these lewd acts in the park. Um, yeah. This guy's probably not teaching anymore. He's clear. He's not. He's not teaching at all. He was fired from his job. Just uh, absolutely sickening. The cops came to arrest him. He actually begged the cops to shoot him in the head. He was like, just end my life. Just please kill me. Uh, released mon- he was released Monday on a $50,000 unsecured bail. Uh, he's got another hearing uh, March 22nd. So uh, I have no idea what's going to go on with this guy, but he's, he ain't teaching anymore. Me and Gio both looked at each other when you said one specific part. $50,000 bond, that's it? That's it. That's it? That's it. I don't know what the difference between an unsecured bond versus like a secured bond would be, but... What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Jail. Forever. Mental hospital. Fucking hosp- dogs. Mental hospital. Banging dogs in the park? Jerking off on a park bench. It's just weird. Someone's gonna sit there in your jizz. Um, well, it says one time he was caught uh putting peanut butter in his uh anus and his dog was licking it out near the park bathroom <laughs> at Rock at Roth Rock State Forest. So that's what was like in the little picture. Who's filming this? No, it was just caught on like trail cams and like bathroom cams. So they these parks they set up cameras all over. So he My just man wasn't even trying to hide it, bro. This guy had deep, deep ridden, yeah. deep rooted, fucking issues, man. Holy just fuck! Put this guy in the psych ward. He's done. He's done. And he was Boy. teaching your kids out there. These sick perverts. These are te- this guy was teaching kids at Penn State, corrupting the youth. He do- he belongs in jail. Oh wow, that is bad. Why, one of the wildest patrol gone wild stories I think we've ever had here. Why is it always Penn State, dude? Why? I don't know. Something in those uh, schools out in the middle of nowhere, I guess. That's fucking weird. All right. Well, I mean, I, I have a, a little story. You know, it, it does actually come with a clip. So oh, wow. uh, this is, we're going to do a. It doesn't happen often. Yeah. Um, uh, police in riot gear arrest, arrest a pooping man before he can wipe <laughs> from a shop toilet. Uh, A wanted bloke was caught with his pants down at a 7-Eleven in Colorado, United States, after the police in riot gear demand his surrender without him wiping first. So we'll uh, we'll just let this little clip play that I have, uh, if I can find it. It's actually pretty fun. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. It sounds funny. I'm I'm here. Come on, man. Whoa, what? Man, I'm taking this. Stand up off the toilet now. What the? Stand up off the toilet now. Stand up. What the? Man, I'm just. Stand up. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to pull your pants up. And let's get this taken care of. We're done having this discussion, bud. I told you I needed you to come out and chat with me. Now I told you we asked. We're gonna escalate it, and we're to that point. Okay. Can I? Can I wipe my ass, please? Put your phone down. Put the phone down. Wow. Put your hands. (laughs) Why? <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? Why? So uh, this viral video floating around of a man taking a shit at a 7-Eleven in Colorado is floating around all over the internet. Um, they didn't let him wipe his ass before he was arrested. Uh, I, I feel like... I personally would have let him wipe his ass. I, we're different. We're, we're just different, I guess. I don't want to deal with a guy with poo. So... When it comes to like bodily fluids, Gio and I have kind of like the same idea on things. Um, if there's the opportunity for them to clean themselves, um, tidy themselves up a tad before you know any, you know, arrest or uh, detaining is done, I think universally across the board, Gio and I will agree and say let them clean themselves. Right. Like in that situation. Like, this dude's not any danger, and if he's clearly reaching to wipe his ass, like, it looked like dude was drawn down on, like, well, it's a stressful shit. My man is taking a shit. Uh, he's like, yo, bro, I'm taking a shit, bro. Can can I wipe? I could have swore that guy with the riot shield pointed at another officer. was like, you get him. <laughs> you go get him. Could have swore I saw That's that. That's a job for the rookie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. You're, you're like, uh, you got an FTO. And it's like, come here, kid, <laughs> kid, you're going to get dirty today. We're going to show you this could be a real shitty job. Uh, I could just picture a certain lieutenant as a PO. Kid, get in here. 
ZRS, kid. <laughs> Cough them up. When you listen to this, you'll know it was you. <laughs> kid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I love that story out of Colorado. I saw that video floating around. I was like, dude, this is unbelievable. The guy's just literally taking a shit and they come like full riot gear. Uh, to I mean, you. I can understand like having a prep. Like, you don't know if this dude's fucking gonna barricade that. Like, if 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 um, they probably had some information that this man may have been armed or, yeah, or whatever. A, I don't know what the warrant was for, so right. they never say what the warrant's for. Did this? So, so my guess is, if there's a warrant for something like that and they're coming in riot gear, uh, my guess is it's probably something pretty bad. Did this guy say he had a bomb and he was going to blow up the bathroom? No, that was All at right. Home Depot. This is just a guy who was dropping a bomb at 7-Eleven <laughs> in Colorado. And um, Yo, yeah. First off, do you know how bad he had to shit if he had to fucking drop trout at fucking 7-Eleven? Pretty bad. Like, I'm just saying. Dog, I got to just throw it out there, bro. The worst, one of the worst moments of my life was when I had to like stop at a random Sunoco. I just, <laughs> in, in our area that we live and buy a C4 after just to make it look a little better because <laughs> it was it was an actual emergency. <laughs> I call it an ISA. It's an instant, instant shit attack. And you're just sitting there and you're like, I'm going to shit right now. I am going to shit or I'm going to shit myself. I need to find the nearest bathroom. These are the shits that you get like hit with burglary you charges. You start sweating over. Yeah, you get hit with a burglary charge because you're kicking a door down to use somebody's bathroom. Dude, I mean, if I was the one that they had to fucking get taken a shit, they would have let me wipe my. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, you do darn finish off, uh, bro. Listen to the sounds. Not but, this guy again. Like they had to open it, they would have heard a. Oh, okay, okay, all right, we'll let you finish. To this day, I don't know what the uh, the actual warrant was for. So uh, the rest of that story remains to be seen. Who knows? Uh, and we'll try and follow up with it. I have no idea. All right. So, uh, I tried to find some details about this video that we're going to play for mine, and I couldn't find anything, but I thought it was funny, and this is how to get a D-dub. Nice. Oh, I can't hear him. Oh, I'm going to blow, so I'm just going to in. Oh, yeah. Do <laughs> so he hits the breathalyzer like he's hitting a bong. Okay. Now, we all know. You have to blow into it. You don't inhale. <laughs> and then his buddy's cracking up laughing, filming. Safe to say he probably got arrested. Now, they're in some other country. It depends. That looked like Russia, dude. So, like, <laughs> I think you might have to be above a certain level of vodka so you don't go to jail. I was but, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, yeah, oh, dude, you're not drunk enough. Hey, well, he's not blowing. He's cheating because he... What? <laughs> This fucking guy. This is bullshit. Yeah. Now, could you imagine, like, so, now, you go to go pull someone over. Here, take this for roadside sobriety test. And they do that. Oh, yeah, okay. Just just step out now, bud. <laughs> yeah. I could watch you do it from the cameras. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, no, 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 you can't even do that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I'll, I'll show you the body cam video. Yeah, show me the body cam, bro. Show me the body cam, man. Uh, fuck, man. Ugh. You, you you banging in uh you banging a day? I don't know. I haven't decided. We're gonna we're gonna definitely discuss it, dude. I know at three like. Well, here's the thing. It doesn't even matter. You're not manpower, so you have up until like. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. You you you're going into this rabbit hole. I don't know where you're yeah. going. You have time. Uh, yeah, that being said, uh, that was Patrol Gone Wild, brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Uh, sponsor of the show, sponsor of the segment, great guy, Steve Saka, shout out. Shout uh, out our- Shout out our number one, one episode, episode of all time. In, like, ten days? Is it already- is Two it weeks now. Dude has yeah. broke every, uh, statistical <laughs> record in show history in ten days? Two weeks now. Sorry, two, two weeks. weeks now, Fourteen yeah. days? Grow a gang. 14 days. Grow a gang. So, uh, Steve, you're a very popular guy. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to the company. Congratulations on all of those banger cigars and all of those great achievements you've had over the last year. You're the man. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Caleb, what do we got next, brother? Legend. Uh, up next, news with Caleb.
right, guys. Up first with the news segment with Caleb, we have Blackwork Studio, Paper Crane, to debut at PCA 2024. You know, we just had James Brown from Blackworks on last week. So we're going to start today with a story right from him. So they are uh, introducing the uh, Paper Crane limited edition from Blackworks Studio line at PCA. It is uh, James Brown from Black Label with uh, Fabrica Oeva Negra. Uh, he's wanted to do this for several several years. Our profile and rapper, our unique uh, golden pink color. It's the first time he's ever said this, and it says it comes off with a light citrus note on the cigar. Uh First time he's also said that as well. So something really new and exciting out of Blackworks. Um, produced out of Esteli, Nicaragua. Two sizes. We've got a Gordo, Gorda box press, 5x46 at $11 a stick. Box of 20 will cost you $220. And then you have the Toro box press, 6x48 for $12. Box of 20 will cost you $240. Um, this is an Ecuadorian Habano binder and filler from Nicaragua. And it is an Ecuadorian Connecticut Des Flor- Florida wrapper. So, interesting combination right there. Uh, it will hit retailers at the end of March. So, like you said in our episode, once he's got this at PCA, he's ready to ship and it's ready to go right away. He waits no time on that. So, coming to you real soon, right after PCA, guys. Definitely something I appreciate about the company because, uh, I mean, it is now March 6th. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of crazy that some of the PCA exclusives have just now hit retailers. Uh, Tatuai, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a year, like nine months ago, you introduced the cigar. And what is happening? It's the one uh, drawback of our industry that logistics don't always, yeah, logistics and announcements <laughs> don't always make sense. And customs is a bitch. Yeah. All right, up next, we have SD DuPont is teasing a Game of Thrones collaboration. Uh, this is also set to release at 2024 PCA trade show, uh, which is taking place the 25th, 23rd to 25th in Las Vegas. So there is no artwork teased. I just did a little thumbnail with the two uh, dragons from Game of Thrones. I have no idea what's going to be on it, what sort of crazy design they're going to do. But it is based off of Game of Thrones, the television show, show by uh, George R.R. R. Martin. They have no idea what's going to be part of this collaboration, but I'm sure if you've seen the show, are fans of it, you can put your imagination to good use. Uh, you're going to get a crazy expensive lighter from Mesty Dupont. Controversial opinion to many. I thought Game of Thrones sucked. I thought it was gay. Really? I liked it. I hated Game of Thrones. I, liked I can tell you that I know a guy who's probably going to be very intrigued by these. Uh, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Adam loves St. Dupont, and well, he collects the, the rarer it is, the more he wants it. Uh, if it's a non-numbered, he has no interest in it. Uh, the article does not say how many numbers are going to be available or anything. Just says uh, they're going to show this off at BCA. I mean, the nerds are going to love this shit. I get it's a popular the pop geeks, cult. the geeks, <laughs> the like geeks. the pop culture relevance of it. You know, I don't know. They need to make cooler shit. Like, I might be convinced to buy like an St. Dupont like Rocky lighter because that'd be cool. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Or like an 80s action hero version. Okay. I think that would be a cool series. Like, one's like fucking Stallone as Rambo, the other's fucking Schwarzenegger. I think and... you need to be more specific, because are we talking about Rocky Patel? Which I know you're not. Yeah. You're talking about Rocky the movie, like Rocky Stallone. Rocky Balboa. Gio, yeah. you're giving all these companies great ideas. Hush. Oh, hush. Jean-Claude Van Damme, like, that'd be a cool lighter. That would be a good. That would be a good idea for a good series of lighter. Yeah, you should reach out and see if maybe that's it, man. Maybe like, we do the collaboration. I want, I want Rambo. I want Terminator. Fucking whatever his name was in Bloodsport. Uh, I'm trying to think. What else is another? Who's another '80s action hero? Uh, Carl Weathers, bro. Why not? Oh, oh Apollo Creed yeah, he too. Just died. Yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Got to pay a little homage, a little respect to our boy you Chuck know, Norris. Put him on there. Or no, we won't even make him as Apollo Creed. We'll make him as the dude from Predator. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Great scene. Great scene. Uh, what do we got next, bud? All right, our last story. We have a whiskey story. We've got New York Distilling Company debuts <laughs> Jaywalk. So this is a Brooklyn distillery, and they're putting out a new line of rye whiskeys under the Jaywalk label. You have a Jaywalk rye bonded, obviously 100 proof, and then the Jaywalk rye straight rye whiskey. This is out of... Uh, they moved from Williamsburg 
to Bushwick. So we got a Brooklyn, Brooklyn Distilling Company, New York Distilling Company, and they're coming out with some rise looking out there in the market. So this is the same company, uh, New York Distilling Company. So it's a, they're putting out this Jaywalk. So out of appreciate uh, the Brooklyn. image, man. I can really, uh, I can really see the the image, man. Those are that's good. The Brooklyn Bridge, yeah. Hey, I try, man. The bottles look good. Interesting bottle. I, you know, hate to harp on it. Jeff March over there. If you're fans of Rock Elite, he's done a, he's been there. I think he's got an upcoming barrel pick. So if it's in the works, maybe you guys will see that if you follow the page. But uh, it's cool that you know so much about the Rock Elite picks coming up, but we never do, Caleb. <laughs> I think this was a big issue on why we're actually not Rock Elite members because I always say Caleb's kind of like in charge of it. Yeah. To like let us know what's cool and coming out, and I don't think I I've send heard... you all the monthlies every time you put some monthly out. Are I you send... out of your fucking mind? The one time I asked you to grab me a bottle, the one time, the one time we were busy at work, I said, "Dude, please get me this bottle." That wasn't Rock Elite. Whatever. The one time I needed you, you weren't there for that, me. That man. wasn't Rock Elite. And that, well, well, and that, and that, and that, Caleb, buddy, that hurt me. You know what you need to do, Jer? Your uh, special page. Needs to get a Rock Elite measure- membership. Fuck that. The Finsta. All right. So you got one bottle that 100 proof that's going to be selling for $55. And the other bottle that uh, 92 proof is going to be selling for $50. Be on the lookout for these hitting markets uh, end of March going into April. So uh, two new rye whiskeys out there if you love rye whiskeys out of New York as well. So See you in May. Yeah, right. Upstate. We'll get it last. But that'll conclude News with Caleb right there. So three interesting stories. Perfect. Um, That being said, Caleb, um, it is that time, my friend. It is time to review the Los Datos Deluxe 2024 Limited Edition by Matt Booth. My Ventura. All right. So appearance with the wrapper and the box. I'm factoring that in. Uh, Both are stellar. It looks fantastic. I'm giving it nine and a half. It looks great. The black and gold. It looks awesome. Very sexy box. Uh, Burn gave us a nine. No relates at all, so it didn't have a problem there. Uh, construction, I'm giving this a nine as well. Great stack of dimes. Held up. Ash when I wanted to. I, you know, you had to really tap it to get that stack of dimes off. Uh, draw, I went with a straight cut, and you know what? I wish I went with a V cut. I should have done it. Uh, so draw, gave it an eight and a half. I felt like it just would have got, you know, more, more clouds of smoke. Fatter. Fat clouds if I went with a V cut. Uh, enjoyment, giving it an 8.5. I just wish it was a little bit of a bigger stick. I don't know, just the size wise. I like the shape, the torpedo size, but I just wish it was a bit longer. That's all. Pause. <laughs> Talking cigars here. Yeah. So uh, you add that up. I got a 44.5 times it by 2. Got an 89 from your boy, Caleb. All right. Uh, oh, additional notes. So I, I, I just had to repeat. Amazing box display. Awesome. Uh, cold draw. I got like this uh, spiced bread and like hay. But at the halfway point of the cigar, the chocolate, the pepper, and some leather really kicked in. So it's uh, getting more peppery towards the final third as well. Uh, I can actually agree on the pepper. Uh, this thing is a very spicy little little cigar, man. Uh, smoking great. Uh, Los Atos Deluxe 2024 Limited Edition. Um Appearance, 9.5. Uh, I really like this box. Uh, it is really cool. I love the display, especially from, you know, like a STG. I mean, usually, I mean, mass-produced products and, you know, obviously bring, like Geo said earlier in the show, uh, bring like a, a mind like Matt Booth. You're going to see a lot more stuff like this. Uh, this cigar, the, the appearance of it in the box, it's got a nice, like, almost like individual they're not just stacked next to each other they're all individually placed um really cool the black and gold looks sick uh the burn i gave it a nine had almost no issues still to this point still smoking great great ash almost i mean as close to perfect as you could probably be uh thing fixes itself when it had a little bit of an issue no big deal uh did i say nine already on that yes okay construction 8.5 Here's where we differ a little bit. You were talking earlier in the show, probably around the halfway point, that you know you really had to tap the ash on that thing to to get the ash to fall off. I feel like the ash on this is actually a little flaky for me. Um, I feel like if you weren't a little more careful, you could wear some of it. Nobody likes to wear an ash. 
Uh, the draw, I gave it a nine. Uh, the smoke output on this thing is fantastic. Uh, not tight, not loose, just like the perfect draw. I straight cut mine. Uh, just a nice straight clip. Nothing crazy. Bring my overall enjoyment to a nine. Uh, 45 bring me to a 90 overall. Uh, I really like this cigar. And um, this was a actual little critique that I got. And I... I think I'm going to start adding this in to our cigar review. I don't think it's an account toward the score, but I think it should severely influence whether or not to buy the cigar. Uh, price point. This cigar retails to at about $16 to $17 in New York, so this thing's probably about $25 bucks here in New York. Uh, I was able to get it at the MSRP. Sixteen seventy, uh, sixteen seventeen dollars. Give this thing a whirl, man. Fantastic, really cool looking cigar. And then on top of it, if you're a band collector or anything like that, you got something really cool to 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 put away. Uh, the tampon line continues, and it's getting better and better. The blend on the cigar, obviously, the Mexican San Andreas got a lot of notes of chocolate. I thought it was very peppery, especially coming into the final third. It's very, very, oh, yeah. very peppery. Uh. I don't know what Caleb's talking about, hay and all that crazy shit that he says, but uh, for me, just a, a chocolatey, peppery cigar. I really enjoyed it. I think if uh, it's 16 17 bucks, give it a whirl. Geo. All right. I'll get into mine. So uh, I think we all have different viewpoints on this cigar, so this is going to be interesting. So appearance, I gave it a 9.5. That I think we can all agree, you know, this is, if you change the LSD logo, and put Room 101, you would notice no difference. This is Matt Booth's influence to a T, in my opinion. Uh, right down to the wrapper on that. For appearance, I gave this a 9.5. It's a really cool box, a cool-looking cigar. Yes, we're going to make fun of it and call it the tampon and all that stuff. You know, of course, the tampon's in a nice box. Yeah, I went there. You could actually buy these tampons instead of being embarrassed to buy it for your wife or girlfriend, like, in a yeah. store. <laughs> Uh, feels good on the nose. <laughs> Burn, I'm right there with you guys. Nine. No issues on that front at all. Uh, even when I've sat it down a bunch of times, you know, pretty even throughout, like just very little issues at all. It ties into the construction, but I also gave the burn a nine. Construction, I gave it an eight. Uh, I had a similar issue with the flaky ashes. So, Caleb, maybe you're just the careful one today. And that was just kind of annoying to me. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit more of a delicate cigar. And I think if you're not careful, unfortunately, with these wrappers like this, like there's a lot of tape and all that stuff. So you might be a uh, less uh, refined touch with these things. You might damage your cigar. You're talking about the actually unraveling it out of the tampon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, add into the fact that you just never know, like, the band on mine slid right off with the packaging, too. It's not always a bad thing. I agree, but if there's too much glue or you know how it is, like, that type of stuff, you might get some wrapper damage. I just am taking that into account and then on top of my ash experience. Draw, I gave this thing a nine. I V-cut it. I had no issues getting the smoke output I wanted. Uh... Overall, the first four points of this cigar are really good. Like, this is where our personal flair comes in. And I'm going to just be honest. Like, I didn't really care for this particular blend. And so I gave the enjoyment a 7.5. I really wanted to like this cigar. And I don't know. Just something about it. I was like, it didn't really do it for me. And I'm not hating on it. Like, just because I don't like it doesn't mean you guys shouldn't try it. Overall, this had the makings of a really good stick. And... Sometimes we just differ in opinions, but that brought my score to a 43, giving it an 86. Not a bad score. Like I said, it just wasn't for me. Holy shit. Damn. That was uh, that was an interesting twist. I'm, I was waiting for the part where you said we'd have differing opinions, and I'm like, where the fuck is it? It can't be enjoyment. <laughs> and it was enjoyment. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't really care for the flavoring. Like, it didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if maybe there was too much going on or it's overcomplicated for my palate, but 
I actually didn't mind it. I actually yeah. really like it. Yeah, uh, no, like this is like sometimes we are going to differ. Like, and this ain't your blend. The same for me. I gotta say, I did like it. I, like I said, I gave it 85, 8.5 overall for my enjoyment. But I gotta say, this last third, peppery little shit, super peppery. They the last did third. say yeah, uh, crazy. Booth did say expect a lot of white pepper and cocoa notes. So I didn't say anything in beforehand just because. I want to see what Caleb actually knows, but he got the... Caleb, uh, what did our overall score come to, bud? All right, overall score, 88.33, so 88 overall. <laughs> Gotta love those horns. I thought it was going to be around 89, 90, uh, personally, but Gio's overall enjoyment really <laughs> hindered that. Uh, okay, um, you heard it here first. Uh, we might be one of the first podcast slash cigar review company to actually review this thing so it is what it is man uh, i think on. you should go out and buy it yeah go out and listen buy it. i'm not saying don't okay we all don't like the same cigars every time and sure i'm not saying this is a bad cigar somebody else might really enjoy geo's this. back baby <laughs> hate non fucking room 101 he's <laughs> fucking back this isn't room 101 this is los statos deluxe mm. okay to- Gonna okay. have to pay those a visit, pay them a visit, and uh, have Geo do some talking. Because I, I really did. I don't know. I just didn't care for this particular one, and like I honestly was on a, a heater of liking Room One Hundred One products. I really enjoyed the Daruma. Loved the Johnny Tobacconot. Uh, I mean, that was I rated the Johnny Tobacconot as one of my best cigars last year. So it's not that it's that. It's just I don't know. I didn't really care for it. Just not a fan of all the rappers that I love the most. <laughs> it's okay. I get you. Hey, listen, I was going to ask you to split a box of T110s with me, but uh, listen, you know, we got a better chance of asking fucking Caleb at this point. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We're going to clarify. There was only one rapper that you like. There was just filler tobacco. The others were different types of tobacco, not the rapper. Still the same kind of tobacco. Well, there's rapper leaf and filler leaf. So. Okay, whatever. Hey, an 88, not a bad score overall. Get out, buy one. Even if you if if, if you only buy one, just buy one. But, test it out. Let us know what you guys think. Listen, I think we all have people that like have found that who identifies more with their taste buds. So if you know, there will be people who will take Jerry's word. There will be people that take your word or mine. Like it's not a big deal. The overall consensus score is still an 88. Is no slouch score. No, no, it's not. It's actually a good score. Yeah. That being said, Caleb, closing up the episode, any uh, final words for you, my friend? All right, guys, just uh, enjoy your spring spring breaks. Uh, if you're an older f- folks like us, you know, reminiscing those memories, but just make sure you are still following Down to Her podcast on Facebook, Instagram, uh, most importantly, YouTube. Subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, have everyone follow us. We're growing. Grow our gang. Uh, check out the TikTok, and just make sure we have the After Earth on Patreon, so make sure you're checking us out there. As well, new episodes every Friday. $6 a month minimum. If you want to be a Mega Herf, $12. We've been having a good time on those Mega Herfs, too. Yeah. Uh, been doing a lot of giveaways, hanging out, shooting the shit with our uh, our listeners, and really just letting them get to know us and off, that, off air. And guys, just make sure, you, like, just for we had a special guest pop on this last one. I'm not going to spoil it. If you were there, you were there. We did say we would be bringing on guests. We'd be doing weird stuff, and I think it's uh, I and think you get it's to get FaceTime with people that you might be fans of their product. That's a good point. Uh, that being said, if you're listening to us audio only, make sure you're checking that out on a Cigar Hustler Podcast Network, the number one cigar network on Podbean. Um, I'm trying to think if we have anything else that we got to go over before next week. Uh, I can't think of anything, so uh, for the fourth time in this episode, make sure you're checking out the Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Down Her Podcast. We look forward to seeing you guys there. And that being said, we will see you next Wednesday. Peace. Yeah.